Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It is Ask the Experts here on Talk Radio 1190. We interview local prominent professionals throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. On what? Well, their area of expertise, of course. I'm the host of the show, Matt Cather. Joining me on today's show here in 2023 for the first time. Great to have him back. It's Mark Underwood, uh, Underwood Law Office. Before we get to Mark, uh, first you can find him online at underwoodlawoffice.com. That's underwoodlawoffice.com. The phone number, it's 844-UNDERWOOD. That's 844-UNDERWOOD. Mark, welcome to the show. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing great today, Matt. Thanks for having me on again, and uh, Happy New Year. Yes, absolutely. It's good to talk to you again, and uh, on the in the new year, we're going to kick things off and kind of get a, a cool topic of conversation, Mark, because, you know, over the time that you've been on the show for, you know, a while now, we we've all we usually tend to cover some of your cases and a lot of the stuff that you've seen out in the field and work with over your years. But I kind of like this because we're going to really – talk about what it takes to become an attorney, what it takes to become a lawyer, and and kind of set the stage for us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and more importantly, uh, tell the folks out there listening uh, what type of lawyer you are. So, great topic today, Matt. Um, yeah. I am uh, a lawyer that does the worst disasters in the country. Uh, for example, uh, if a chemical plant blows up during a hurricane or a fertilizer plant blows up in central Texas, or some other sort of disaster occurs, that may very well be our case. And uh, we've done a lot of them over the years. And also, so those are disasters on a, on a grand scale. We also do disasters that uh, tear apart families. For example, a, um, another case we did involved the death of two teenage boys uh, in an automobile accident. So uh, what I tell people when they ask me what kind of lawyer you are, uh, usually I'll tell them I'm a telephone lawyer because I spend so much time on the telephone. But uh, then I'll explain to them, in reality, we do the worst disasters in the country. And and kind of to build off that, what are some of the more well-known cases that you have been involved with, Mark? So, hey, over the years, we've been in a in a lot of very well-known cases. One of the, the most well-known happened back in 2010, and it was the Upper Big Branch coal mine disaster that blew up, killed 29 people, and injured about 25 others uh, when methane gas was ignited in a coal mine and ripped through the mine, killing people and uh, injuring miners as the, as the explosion occurred. And and that case led to our involvement in the West Texas fertilizer plant explosion that happened in April of 2013. 15 people were killed down in West Texas, and about a third of the town was destroyed, and about 450 people were injured. We had a, about 180 clients in that case. And that led to a, a water crisis that happened uh, in Charleston, West Virginia, the water was uh, a, a chemical holding facility that had a chemical called MCHM that was used for processing uh, coal. These tanks that were holding that chemical sprung a leak, and the chemical leaked out into the into the river, traveled downstream to the municipal water supply, and then fouled the municipal water supply, causing the water for a town of about 300,000 people to be shut down for several days, and we were involved in an environmental class action arising out of that case. Um, that led to a case that happened during Hurricane Harvey down in Houston. Uh, Arkema Chemical Plant uh, caught fire, and we filed an environmental class action over that. Um, then another uh, case of ours and is involving a, a middle school called Zahn's Corner Middle School south of Columbus, Ohio, where a nuclear uranium enrichment plant um, uh, was located near a, a middle school. And, and it turns out that the air monitors outside the, the middle school started showing uh, radiation and uh, you know radio, radioactive isotopes, and they went and tested inside the middle school and found radiation 
in the middle school, and that's another another one of our environmental uh, class actions. Another one hitting a little closer to home is the Cortland Frisco uh, fire that happened uh, during Snowmageddon. A, uh, a yeah. large apartment building in Frisco, Texas, burned down, leaving uh, several hundred people homeless, and that's that's another one of our cases. So we we've, we've done over the last several years uh, just a large number of these horrible disasters that really destroyed people's lives. And because of the experience you've gained in a lot of these high profile and well-known cases, you saw, and before kind of before we get into things, you've also because of that you've learned a lot throughout the years. You you did a revolved with some books as well, correct? Um well with the, I know I think it's more pertaining to like the head injuries uh, you had a Yeah. Yeah, so we um uh, for example, in the Upper Big Branch coal mine explosion, the West Texas fertilizer plant explosion, there were lots of brain injuries. Yeah. When a and when someone is standing close to an explosion, and the explosion occurs, there's uh, an overpressure uh, wave that uh, radiates out from the explosion, and as that comes uh, approaches someone, it's an overpressure, and then very quickly as it passes through someone, it's an underpressure. And it results in brain injury. So over the years, we've done a huge number of brain injury cases. In fact, we wrote a small book uh, about resources for brain injury victims in the North Texas area. Anybody wants to get a copy of that, they can call us at 844-UNDERWOOD. We're happy to, to provide them. It's just full of local doctors, rehab facilities, and ways to cope with brain injuries if you're living in North Texas. Yeah, and I always like to mention that because I I think it's a pretty cool resource and, and something that will help you understand kind of what all brain injuries are uh, uh, really in detail. Uh, very very cool. We're talking with Mark Underwood of Underwood Law Office. You can find him online at underwoodlawoffice dot com. Eight four four Underwood is the phone number. That's eight four four Underwood, and he is a personal injury attorney uh, located in McKinney, Texas. And you know he kind of broke it down for us right there. We've recovered a lot of his uh, well-known cases here on Ask the Experts and went real in-depth with it. It's very uh, in- riveting stuff. I've always been very uh, enjoyed talking to you, Mark. But today's a cool topic, too, because I kind of like this for anybody that's out there listening. You know, how did you get involved and kind of tell us, you know, kind of going to talk about throughout the show how to become a lawyer and what it takes. Uh, you know, we'll start, let's go back years ago, Mark, and and talk about when did you first, you know, realize, come to this uh, realization that you wanted to be a lawyer? So uh, it makes me smile when you ask that question. <laughs> it, prob- it probably goes all the way back to when I was in sixth grade. In sixth grade, I was I was in my elementary school spelling bee competition, and uh, I studied really hard, and I was ready for the competition. I was convinced that I thought I should do real well, if not win. And, of course, went throughout the entire elementary school, and it came down to me and Alan Plyben. Alan Plyben, if you're out there anywhere in the world, get in touch with me because you're responsible <laughs> for me being a lawyer. Very cool. And, and, and Alan and I went back and forth and back and forth on words, and I missed the word. And they declared Alan Plyben the elementary school spelling bee champion. And I – uh, went back to my desk, and something didn't seem right. So I got out the rules, the national rules for the spelling bee, started reading, and I, and I confirmed that after you miss a word in a spelling bee, the other uh, person has to um, spell a word after you. At least that's what the, the rules were way back then. And, you know, so I had gone first, I missed the word, and then he didn't have to spell a word correctly after me. So... <laughs> I cited the rule in the spelling bee uh, rule book, took it to my sixth grade teacher. Sure enough, they had messed up on the rules in the sixth grade spelling bee. So I got a rematch with Alan Plyben and um, went back and forth and back and forth again with Alan Plyben. And Alan Plyben beat me fair and square on the word artillery. I don't think I can spell artillery to this day. (laughs) I look it up every single time. There's a, there's a mental block on spelling the word artillery for myself, and um, uh, but that was probably the, my my first time in my life sitting down and 
researching an issue, what the rule is applicable, arguing why the rule was not followed, and presenting it to the decision maker. And, and that was probably how I first decided I had an inkling that I, I might want to be a lawyer. And then probably after that, I had a grandmother, and she had a, a, a set of scales of justice in her living room. And whenever I would argue with her about something like teenage boys sometimes do, she would point over to those scales of justice and she would tell me that, that I ought to be a lawyer. And then there was also a very good friend of mine. Uh, his name, uh, his father's name was Big Jim St. Clair, and he was a lawyer in the town that I grew up in. And um, I was always fascinated by who would tell. So that's, those are probably the, the three first things that got me thinking that, hey, maybe I want to be a lawyer. I love the spelling bee, spelling bee story. That's great. <laughs> um, and, and because of that, you, you did pursue that uh, pathway, a career. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it took. What, what do you have to do to become a lawyer in regards to you know the academics and all that that entails? So uh, the first thing you have to do is, is graduate from high school, or I suppose you could probably get a, a GED, and then head to college. And you've got to uh, enroll in a college, accredited college, uh, get a four-year degree. Typically, that's a bachelor's. And then you got to take the law school admission test. After you take the law school admission test, you, you start applying to all the law schools. You've got to get accepted to law school. And then you uh, uh, got to spend three years in law school uh, studying and then graduate from law school. Then you got to take the bar exam you got to wait several months to get your results to find out that you passed or failed the exam, and then you got to get sworn in, and and then you got to get a client so you can do some actual legal work. So those are the the basic um, the basic requirements of being a lawyer. Four years of college, uh, or you know however long it takes you to complete a bachelor's degree, and then three years of law school, pass the bar exam, and you're on your way. And to kind of build off that, what else did you do in regards to schooling or, or what it, whatever it might be? What did you do to prepare yourself to get to that point and and and, and get do the bar and get um you know go to law school essentially? So hey, you know whenever lawyers get together for dinner or drinks, this is always a fun conversation to to hear what other lawyers did to get ready uh, to, uh, for law school or try to prepare themselves. A couple of things I did. Was, the very first semester of college, you know, I had an idea that I was, I wanted to go to law school. And I, I sent away to law schools all across the country for their applications so, so that I could see when I first started college what was required of a law school admission application. So I had law school applications from all over the country sitting in my uh, dorm room when I was a freshman in college. And and I uh, got a pretty good idea of what was required and made sure I spent the next four years in college getting those things that would get me into law school. So that was the first thing. Also in college, I did a lot of internships in government offices. And I, I took an LSAT, the Law School Admission Test Preparation Course. And then, of course, when I got out of law school and I was getting ready for the bar exam, I took several uh, bar exam preparation courses. So there's little extra things. Uh, sometimes you need to to push you over the top. Folks, we're talking with Mark Underwood. He's a personal injury attorney located in McKinney, Texas. Always great to have him here on ACS, which we really enjoy the time he spends with us. Uh, Today's conversation, well, you know, we've covered a lot of his well-known cases. Today's a really neat one because we're talking about, well, what it takes to become a lawyer, what what his journey was like uh, throughout his life to become a lawyer. Uh, the person he is today in, in the, as an attorney, and a uh, very cool co- conversation. We're going to take literally a minute break. We're going to come back, pick up where we left off. we got a lot to cover on Ask the Experts, so stay tuned. This is Ask the Experts here on Talk Radio 1190. Welcome back to the show, folks. Everybody. Hope everybody's joined their Saturday morning. This is Ask the Experts here on Talk Radio 1190. We interview local prominent professionals here in the Dallas-Fort Worth on their area of expertise, of course. Joining me on the show, Mark Underwood. He's a personal injury attorney 
and his office is located in McKinney, Texas. Before we get to, back to Mark, UnderwoodLawOffice.com is the website. It's UnderwoodLawOffice.com. The phone number, hey, if you just want to reach out and you need his help, or if you just want to have some questions for us, for him, 844-UNDERWOOD. That's 844-UNDERWOOD. And, and the reason I say if you have some questions for him, because I'm sure he'd uh, be more than happy to take your questions because we're talking about a pretty cool topic conversation today. You know, we've covered a lot of his cases in the past year on Ask the Esters, which is also, which also is some really riveting stuff. It's uh, He's been involved with a lot of high-profile ones, even on a lower scale. They've always been pretty intriguing to talk to him about. But, you know, Mark, we're talking about what it takes to become a lawyer today and kind of your journey and when you decided that you wanted to take this career path. So uh, to pick up where we left off, I think a, a really important thing to discuss is, you know, what what for you, what do you say to anybody listening out there that thinks they want to take this path? Uh, what's the number one most important thing that you found to be really vital during your career in, in, in getting to the point where you are now? Well, so, hey, you know, when you're in college, everybody and their brother says, I'm going to law school, I'm going to law school. Yeah. And you find by the time, you know, you get to be a senior, the number that are actually – going to law school and actually end up enrolling uh, is a very small percentage of those you used to hear on campus boasting about going to law school. And one of the big things that weeds people out is the law school admission test. And uh, if you do real well on the LSAT, you can get into a really good law school, you get into a, a good law school that affects your job opportunities when you graduate. So early on, one of the, the first big big important things to do is do well on the LSAT. If you don't achieve a high LSAT score, you can still be a great lawyer and you can still be very successful. You can still help a whole lot of people uh, if you're diligent and you stay on top of stuff. So uh, first, first thing is the LSAT. If that doesn't, if you don't do as well as you had hoped, you can still be a great lawyer. though. Now, how old exactly were you when you did finally graduate from law school? So I was 25 years old when I graduated from law school. It seems like a couple of centuries ago at this point, but it was uh, straight through college and straight out of law school, graduating when I was 25. And I, I'm really excited about this next, the next route we're going because I, I know from what I've gathered and talked to people over the years, and I guess you'll confirm it for us, being a young lawyer could be a little difficult. It's a, it's definitely a, a, a tough thing to do. What was, uh, you know, what was it like to be a young lawyer, you know, at 25, at 26? And, and when you got into, you know, broke into that world, what was a, your typical day, I guess you could say, for a young lawyer? It's like a two-part question, kind of. So, you know, being a lawyer at 25, to me, was pretty cool because I, I still had friends that were that were in college. Yeah, some, some friends that took you know five, six, sometimes even longer years to get out of college, and I I was already out of law school. So you know I had friends that were still waiters and waitresses, and I had friends who were tending bar while I was uh, actually out practicing law, getting to do pretty exciting pretty responsible things. Um, and, you know, they, we'd sit down and they would talk about how they were uh, cleaning the tables at Olive Garden. And I was talking about multi-million dollar construction defect lawsuits. So it was, it was pretty cool coming out of school and having a, a really professional, really responsible job at that early of an age. And uh, real quick, folks, we're talking with Mark Underwood of Underwood Law Office. That's where you can find him online. UnderwoodLawOffice.com is the website. It's UnderwoodLawOffice.com. 844-UNDERWOOD is the phone number. That's 844-UNDERWOOD. Talking about, well, what it takes and, and what his journey was like becoming a, a lawyer, attorney that he is today. Now, Mark, to to kind of build off that, you know, you get out of, you get out of uh, law school. You know, you're sitting there. You seem like you you kind of implied it in the le- previous question, but d- was it all worth it? What did you? What was your mindset once you completed and and you're kind of breaking into that world? You know, as a young lawyer, my my typical day was um, getting assignments from junior partners and senior partners to w- work on 
you know, discrete aspects of their cases with them. And usually with guidance of someone who'd been practicing for a bunch of years, but then they would start, if you didn't mess any of that stuff up, you did pretty well. They'd start let, letting you go to court and letting you do depositions and, and that, and letting you do depositions of experts. And all of that would be typically involving some topic that you really did not have much familiarity with before uh, becoming a lawyer. And you would have to learn all kinds of, uh, all, t- all kinds of things about all kinds of different areas that you just never dreamed you would, you'd be involved in. And it was, it was pretty exciting and pretty interesting. And um, it was definitely worth it. When I, when I first came out of law school, it was um, um, really exciting, especially in comparison to what my friends were still doing when they, when they were getting out of college. And, you know, we got a couple minutes left on the show before we wrap things up, Mark. So we'll kind of, let's fast forward things. Let's, let's fast forward years to present day. And what is it like for you in, in 2023? What is your typical day now uh, it's after all these years of being in, in, in the being an attorney, being a personal injury attorney uh, throughout the years? So typically I get into the office about 8 a.m. Typically I leave sometime between 5.30 and 6 p.m. Take uh, most days, take an hour for, for lunch. Um, I have uh, a few lawyers that work for me where, you know, when I was a young lawyer working on bits and pieces of cases for older lawyers, now the role is kind of reversed. And I have younger lawyers that are working as part of a team with me uh, on cases that we're doing And a lot of the times it's just supervising and correcting younger lawyers that are working for me now. We go to trial a couple times to three times per year. Uh, That's usually our goal. Not many cases are are tried anymore, but we try to force ourselves to to get into trial whenever we can. Um, I spend a huge amount of time on telephone uh, with either Zoom calls or telephone calls with co-counsel on some of these larger cases. So, you know, that's how, you know, when somebody asks me what kind of lawyers I am, a lot of times I will joke and and say that I'm a telephone lawyer because I spend so much time (laughs) on the telephone. But uh, that's that's typically what my day is like now. I'll go to court um, by Zoom a lot more. We used to never go to court by Zoom, but now we go to uh, court by Zoom a lot, especially in federal court, which most of our cases are in federal court. But um, that's that's how the, the typical day goes. Yeah, and and you know, Mark, we've been doing this show with you for a couple of years now, and and we've always had a great conversation. So I feel like you know where I want to go it, it, next kind of explains itself. It, it seems to me, I would assume that you would do this all over again. That you've enjoyed uh, this journey, and that you really uh, enjoy your career. Would definitely do it all over again, especially the uh, excitement and the rewards while being a, a, a young lawyer. You do anything for as long as I've been a lawyer, and it gets to be um, not just just kind of a routine because it's you're doing so many of the same things again and again. But um, I would do it again. Um, uh, I'm not as excited about it as what I was <laughs> when I was 26, 27 years old, but you know it's still a very challenging profession that um, you get to help a lot of people with. Mark, we got to wrap things up if, for all the hopefully, especially the young lawyers out there if they're tuning in or just anybody really. Uh, closing remarks, some piece of advice where we get out of here. Well, I think we've pretty much covered most of it. During yeah. The episode. It. Um, You know, anything you do, just find something you really enjoy doing it and and become obsessed with it and do it as well as you can do it. And I couldn't agree more. Mark, always a pleasure having you on the show. One more time, folks, it's Mark Underwood. He's a personal injury attorney. His office is located in McKinney, Texas. If you want to reach out to him first, you can find him online at underwoodlawoffice.com. That's underwoodlawoffice.com. UnderwoodLawOffice.com. Phone number 844 Underwood. That's 844 Underwood. Mark, we got to get out of here. Always a pleasure, sir. And I, I know we'll be talking to you here very soon again, okay? Okay. Thanks for having me on the show, Matt. Yes, sir. Again, this has been another edition of Ask the Esrich here on Talk Radio 1190. We got one more before we close things out. 
Great to talk to Mark again. That was a very cool conversation. Stay tuned, folks. This is Ask the Estrich here on Talk Radio 1190.